special award. During the interview process, I remember admitting to Dan and David that I'd never worked in television before. And uh, I remember very clearly down the phone, David Benioff said to me, oh, this isn't television. Gym team runs full whack at about a hundred, so we have like we have two full teams running two different units, and then we have the extras teams that can run at you know, 40 people. And then we have our breakdown team, which is probably at 15 people. We have the armor, which is about 10 people, and then the workroom, which is again about 18, 19 people. And then you have the designers, assistants, and supervisors, and the wardrobe mistresses. So it's just this epic organisation really. We just took this on board as if it was going to be shown on a feature film screen. We'd never done television and even to this day we have no differentiation between the two. Your audiences are more sophisticated, you can't cut corners. When I think back on it, it was just a wonderful, you thought you really did think you were in another world. When this came up I was intrigued because I know that it was a very ambitious set of characters and issues. Not least was the fact that we had to shoot two units at the same time and not necessarily in the same country, but with the same actors going backwards and forwards. There is something that is the Game of Thrones machine, and the way Game of Thrones has to work is very special. It's not film, and it's not strictly television either. There's so many parts to create one massive machine, and they all have to be of an incredibly high standard, otherwise it shows. That was always the great thing about being involved in Game of Thrones, was the quality of the production from every angle. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. From the very earliest sort of script meetings that I'll attend, um, we then start the concept artists almost immediately. So for every key scene, for every key set or prop, we have you know beautiful concept art produced that David and Dan will then approve. That piece of artwork then becomes key for all of the different departments going forward from the cinematographer and the way they light it to maybe the model maker and how that sort of prop is built and what material it's made out of or special effects or visual effects and what they have to add. It's like the one document that we all hold and all being well on shoot day is something that we've managed to recreate. The great thing about Dave and Dan is they rarely said, this is what we want. They sort of let Gemma and myself and Deb design something and then, then they may come in and say, well, this is a bit too far for us or this could be better here. So they'll come in and guide you. And it was a big thing for them. It was their first big, big series. So it was a learning curve for all of us. You can't win the throne if you're dead. You can't break the wheel if you're dead. So what would you have me do? Nothing. They've lived and breathed this project, I think, for the, certainly the couple of years beforehand. So everything that evolved was essentially coming through their eyes. Their feeling was for, for us, or for me certainly, just to try and do whatever seemed fit. And they would give me some reaction. And it was always positive, I have to say. <laughs> In order for you to create your character, it is the look and the feel is the first opening of a door right. into that world in that respect. And then you have the dialogue, then you have the script. Ten is too young to see such things. He won't be a boy forever. And winter is coming. They brought so much fantastic, incredible writing, you know, and, uh, and, and naturally flowing writing and adventurous. You know, they've, they've just gone out on a limb. They thought we're not gonna follow the normal formula. David and Dan were very, very concise. They really worked together as a team. They really knew what they wanted. The biggest thing for them in season one was more blood, more blood, more blood. Post was so fast, we had three months, having shot for six months, and we were already posting before we had finished filming. So they were so flat out with trying to keep up with script rewrites, find out what was going on set, keep an eye on that, and then we were already posting at the same time. So I think what those two achieve is phenomenal. 
one of Dan and David's great talents was they managed to corral a whole lot of workaholic perfectionists into one place working on one project. Certainly the show wouldn't be where it is without everybody's dedication to it and love of it. We were always under pressure. You might have maybe 10 characters in per day, and you know how long each character takes to go through the process of makeup and the hair. Speed is of the essence, so one has to work the best way to achieve the effects that you want in the limited time that you have. But I think everybody just felt that was the way to go. We just wanted to, to make it the best thing we, we could. Although we pull our magic out in post, we have to get a lot of stuff practically while we're shooting. We had to have a big element shoot at the end. I think we got a day or two. I think now they get a month. Um, <laughs> so the camera department, the lighting guys, everyone was really collaborative and everyone would, would pull out whatever they needed to in order to get it done in this record-breaking speed that we were making this show at. I don't think anyone knew the scale it was ever going to become, and I don't think anyone realised how successful it was going to be after season one. The scale of the show, especially initially, was really overwhelming. I hadn't really ever had such a huge department before. Armour, I hadn't designed armour before and suddenly I had a whole armory asking me questions. They were brilliant because they did guide me. I'd say, I really want something like this. And they'd say, well, look, you have to think how they bend. So I think it's really important to talk to people about what you're doing. The actors as well, you know, I try and engage with them and I try and listen to what they're saying and how they feel things should be. It's just meticulously researched for a real world. Everything had to be grounded in reality, otherwise, how do you play fantasy? You can't. You just create real people. That's how you play anything. I had my study, Ned Stark's study, with all these little, interesting, quirky objects. It was of the highest quality, you know. So much thought had gone into it. People might not appreciate, but it's all there. There's no shortcuts. I loved it so much because they allowed me to make things properly, things that you can look at, you know, from like five centimetres away and actually go, God, that's hand-stitched. I mean, all of the costumes, everything we do, the sets, everything, they are real. They're made in an authentic way by incredibly skilled craftspeople. It's helped this huge resurgence of craft, and it's such a big thing we talk about now, but when Game of Thrones started, especially in television, there wasn't the possibility to do it. I mean, of course, there are big shows before, but I think Game of Thrones really allowed people to be the best they could be. The British are so famous for being so very well trained within the art department. Nowhere else would they have been able to cope with this degree of detail and this degree of historical sort of references. It's been wonderful that they chose to remain in the north of Ireland, in Belfast, and the gift that that has given is extraordinary in terms of employment, income, reputation. A lot of the teaching facilities now, particularly for makeup, I mean, there's a lot of interest because of Game of Thrones. It has focused the mind on people wanting to work in this business, so I hope we're able to capitalise on that. I don't think any other television series in the world has done this well. And I think the fact that it's shot in, in the UK and it's predominantly UK crew is something to be so proud of. To receive the Craft Special Award is just so amazing because it doesn't only recognise the heads of department, it recognises all the people that actually make it possible. I can draw a costume, but it's the people that create it, that stitch it, that colour it, that dye it, that paint it, that break it, are the people who actually I think this is really for. It's fascinating to watch them at work. Carpenters, the ironsmiths, the weavers, the list is endless. They were a major, major part in the success of the show for these incredible artisans to be recognised is just a wonderful achievement, so thank you, BAFTA. It's just absolutely wonderful to be recognised by the British Academy because this is the home of Game of Thrones. And certainly as the show comes to an end, how perfect is that? Mm -hmm.